it may not quite be at the genius level of the Silence of the Lambs or Seven, but The Bone Collector remains essential viewing, thanks largely to its seriously charismatic leading man and its leading lady, whose beauty often ignites the screen. I'm Stephen Archibald, and welcome to my movie podcast. You know, they say, you know, we come into this world with a preordained destiny. I don't believe it, though. Destiny is what you make it. Stay back until I work the crime scene, okay? For 15 years, he was New York City's leading forensic cop. <laughs> but Detective Lincoln Rhyme had given up on life. 9286. Until a killer with no mercy. You heard about that couple who got in a taxi, never made it home? Hello to you, and welcome to my podcast. They came from within cult movie reviews. Bad to the Bone, The Bone Collector, 1999. Jeffrey Deaver's tetraplegic detective, Lincoln Rhyme, is so popular that 16 novels about his exploits have been published between 1997 and 2023. The Bone Collector being the first book in the series. The movie begins with our dogged, brilliant detective uncovering a dead body in a hazardous location. The ceiling collapses on Lincoln and he is left paralysed from the neck down, eventually ending up only being able to work with the finger of one of his hands. However, the bed-bound Lincoln is still able to exercise his razor-sharp brain. The rookie cop Amelia Donaghy, who's portrayed by the divine Angelina Jolie, discovers a corpse near to a railway line. Rhyme gets to hear about her creative methods in securing the crime scene, and he eventually manages to persuade the reluctant Amelia into helping him solve the case. But as they start to piece the clues together, the killer strikes again. This movie may be a little formulaic, but it has interesting touches, and the relationship that develops between Lincoln and Amelia is rather beguiling. There's a scene early on in which the two of them gaze at one another, with each one trying to figure the other out, and it is beautifully lit by the cinematographer Dean Semler. Denzel's magnetic in this sequence, and Angelina draws you in by looking directly at the camera. Martin Bregman was one of this film's producers, and his mind was set on casting Al Pacino, whom he'd worked with on a number of occasions in the lead role. However, Pacino's commitment to making The Insider prevented this being possible. After then considering the likes of Sean Connery and Harrison Ford, Denzel Washington winded up with the part of Lincoln Rhyme. Similarly, Demi Moore and Nicole Kidman were among the actresses considered for the part of Amelia Donaghy before Angelina Jolie bagged it. What is intriguing is that it was this movie's director, Philip Noyce, who wanted Washington and Miss Jolie for the key parts. Denzel was already an established star by the late 1990s, but Angelina was virtually unknown then, so Noyce clearly had an eye for emerging talent. Funnily enough, the movie Girl Interrupted was released one month after this one, and Angelina picked up an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her part in it. An element of the killer's modus operandi is to pick up his victims with a yellow New York City cab, a clever cloaking device in a city full of such vehicles, and the manner in which he chains up and brutally treats his victims is truly unsettling. Another pleasing performance in The Bone Collector comes from the R&B artist turned actress, Queen Latifah. Here she plays 
Lincoln's devoted nurse, Thelma. Her name surely being a tribute to the actress Thelma Ritter, who played the nurse of James Stewart's immobilised investigator in Rear Window. And it is ironic how both Denzel and Queen Latifah ended up playing the part of the equaliser. Mr Washington in three big screen movies and Queen Latifah in a present day reboot of Edward Woodward's classic 1980s series. Found him dead, buried, hands sticking out of the ground with his wife's diamond wedding band shoved on one of his fingers. And a patrol officer. There's been a homicide. I can't let you through. We got Officer Donahue here to thank for photographing the crucial evidence. Gave him a reason to live. I want you to work the case with us. Forensics is not my area. Are you being modest or are you a little uneasy about doing some real police work? The terrific suspenseful dead calm from 1988 was the movie which introduced the Australian director Philip Noyce to a wider world. It did the same thing for one of its stars, the aforementioned Nicole Kidman. Noyce directed two films featuring Tom Clancy's popular character Jack Ryan, Patriot Games in 1992 and Clear and Present Danger in 1994. Noyce is also known for helming the acclaimed Rabbit Proof Fence, which was released in 2002. However, his movies, Slither and The Saint, were not well received. It is worth mentioning that this movie cinematographer, Dean Semler, also worked with Noyce on Dead Calm, and a director puts in a cameo appearance as a customer browsing through books in a New York bookstore. What's rather touching is that Denzel and Queen Latifah got to spend time with the marvellous Christopher Reeve so that he could advise them on their scenes together. Likewise, Angelina spent time with a number of real New York City policewomen I love the production design on The Bone Collector and the Brit Nigel Phelps was responsible. He's helped to make such movies as Judge Dredd, Tim Burton's Batman, Troy and World War Z all look rather gorgeous. There are a couple of other actors in this picture that I should mention. Michael Rooker portrays the overbearing Captain Howard Chaney and Ed O'Neill loved by many for playing Al Bundy in the comedy series Married with Children plays Lincoln's buddy Detective Paulie Zelito. In June 2023 it was revealed that a belated sequel to this movie could soon be on the way with Denzel and Angelina reprising their roles. There was a 10-part TV series called Lincoln Rhyme, Hunt for the Bone Collector, which was broadcast by NBC in 2020 and which starred Russell Hornsby and Ariel Kebbell. The exterior filming on the Bone Collector was carried out around New York and its interiors were shot in Montreal in Canada. Filming took place between the 21st of September and the 11th of December 1998. Released in the States on the 5th of November 1999, the movie went on to make a healthy $151.5 million from a budget of $48 million. I'm Stephen Archibald and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. You can follow me if you like, and all of my episodes are available through most podcast hosts. Look after your good self, only take fully authorised cabs, and goodbye for now. He needs her to go where he can. Talk to me. I can't do this. Yes, you can. I'm with you every step of the way. To see how he sees. Lincoln, I found a map of some kind, a chunk of a clean bone. This crime scene was staged. There's no question that Perp knows forensics. Before the next victim is chosen. 
I got a bad feeling about this. Doesn't that kind of look like a face? Third piece of the puzzle. I want Donahue to go in first. She's not trained for this. 